Hello everyone, my name is John Bossart. I'm an HPE Business Transformation Center Engineer for Ingram Micro. I help support servers, blade systems, storage, as well as networking technology solutions from HPE. In my videos, what I like to do is show you a slide from a popular PowerPoint and then demonstrate to you what that means within a management interface. Today we're going to continue on with HPE's Nimble Storage Solution. And we're going to look at this solution in relation to what VMware VVALS is all about. VMware VVALS is supposed to be, over time, a replacement for VMFS and NFS. And it really allows VMware's vSphere environment to directly talk with a storage solution. Right, so the way I usually like to describe this is, is today, we'll say we have a VMFS volume and we're presenting that to a VMware environment. We have a whole bunch of virtual machines that are running on it, and we're taking array-based snapshots. Right, and one day it comes along that we want to recover a virtual machine to a known good state. So if I go into the storage snapshots and I want to recover that volume, but I'm going to recover all the virtual machines that exist on that volume. But so what do we do to kind of circumvent that? Um, is we clone that volume and then we represent it to the VMware environment and then we have to go through a re-signature process. It takes a real lot to actually get back to the, the virtual machine and recover it inside the environment. Right. So we can look at it in that fashion. Uh, we could also look at it from a VMware side of things. So, so obviously with a VMware virtual machine, we take a VMware-based snapshot of that virtual machine. But what happens under the cover of that virtual machine when we do so? Well, you've got a VMDK file for the virtual hard drive. A Delta file is created every single time we create a snapshot in that environment. And that Delta file um, interjects performance issues within a virtual machine. Need latency, you can IOPS and things like that it can cause problems. Right, so generally speaking, within a VMware environment, we want to take a snapshot of a virtual machine, but we want to get rid of that snapshot as soon as possible. So VMware VVALS kind of helps in, in both of these scenarios. So with all that being said, let's kind of explore this management interface. Okay, here's my nimble storage solution. So just to get our heads wrapped around the way we currently do things with maybe a VMFS volume, if I go under Manage and Data Storage, I have this volume presented to a VMware environment, as the name implies. Right? But I have no insight to any of the virtual machines that are running on this volume. If I want to understand what, volume, what virtual machines are running on this volume, I would go inside VMware vSphere. I'd go into the Data Store context, and I'd select that, that volume as it's presented to the VMware environment, and then I could see the virtual machines. So let's talk about VVALs. Now, VVALs are implemented within a Nimble environment through their folders. Right? So folders is kind of a, a management context, maybe an organizational context. So I'm going to quickly create a folder and just show you what it does, and then we'll kind of get rid of this, and we'll go to the VVALs piece. But at any rate, we'll click a plus sign. We'll just call this our folder. Leave it in the default pool. The management type, we're going to leave it set at none, but we can see what we're going to be looking at in a little bit. All right? How much space? We're going to leave it as um, no limit, and we'll click Create. Now, obviously, there are some metrics around performance I can set within that, that context. All right, now I can go into the folder, and now we can just create a regular volume as we do for, for anything we normally do with introduction. Right, we'll leave it in the folder. We'll select the performance policy, and all this we kind of went through in the, the basic Nimble administration video. We'll select our snapshot schedule, give it access to a system, and of course we should always use chat, but I'm not doing that for these videos. We'll click Create, and now we have our volume. Now if I go up the tree here, we'll go to the default context, we can see that volume exists within that folder. All right, if I just select the folder, we can see that volume exists within this folder. So again, this folder I can set IOPS limits and throughput limits if I felt like it. So let's get rid of this. Let's set this offline. And then we'll delete it. And then we'll get rid of the folder as well. All right, so let's go create a folder for VVALS. So we'll click the plus sign. We'll call this our eval folder. 
but leave it in the default pool. This time for management type, we're going to select VMware virtual volumes, or VVOLs. Then we're going to select the vCenter that we are working with, which is this guy here. Right, what's our space limit? Right, so we don't necessarily want VMware to have that the entire storage system. So at this time, we'll just set a, a one terabyte limit. But of course, we've got these performance metrics and limitations we can put in. So we can click Create. And that really all there is um, to presenting uh, VVALs to a VMware environment through a nimble storage system. That's, that's all the configuration. The next side of things, we need to go into the VMware environment and discover um, uh, the setting and, and then actually uh, bring it online inside the VMware environment. So sometimes it takes a little bit, so we might have to rescan a couple times in order to be able to find it. But if I go over into the vSphere environment, um, I can do this a couple different ways. I can go over to the data store. Can right click on the data store and then go to storage and do new data store. Right, you can see we can see we've got the different types and VVALS is on the bottom. Click next and we're not discovering our folder yet, um, but we can, are seeing a three-par folder that's available to us. So so VVALS isn't just limited to Nimble. Obviously, three-par and other storage systems out that are out there have the ability to use VVALs as well. So let's, let's click Cancel here. And another way to actually um, find these is, is, is through uh, right-clicking on the cluster and going on the storage. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rescan the storage. Maybe that'll help it get discovered a little quicker. All right, so our rescan is completed. So let's go see if we can find this guy. Data store, VVAL, we'll click next, and there is our VVAL from our Nimble storage system. So we'll call this Nimble Manual. The reason why I'm calling this manual because we've manually created this VVAL. You can certainly use the vCenter plugin, the Nimble vCenter plugin, to be able to create this volume. I'm going to do that in a little bit. So we're going to click next. We're going to present it to both these hosts. We'll click next again and then finish. All right, now that this is completed, um, one of the things I'd like to point out before we go look inside the storage systems is if I select the storage context and let's look at our, our nimble uh, volume here for our AF40 and let's go look under files. Right, we can see this vSphere HA file. And that's not related to any virtual machine. It's just there for HA fail over uh, abilities within a VMware environment. So let's go look at our Nimble storage system for our Nimble manual VVAL that we created. Let's go into the folder. And we can see again, we see an HA volume kind of created in there. Right, so that's an interesting type of context. So let's create a virtual machine uh, within this VVAL environment. So let's go back over to our clusters and I think I have a Windows 2019 system here that we can clone. Right click, clone this virtual machine. We'll just call it Ingram Micro. Click next. We'll select this cluster. Click next again. And then we'll find our new Nimble VVAL volume created. Click Next, Next, and then Finish. And this virtual machine will be cloned. So obviously cloning a virtual machine is going to take a little time. I'm going to fast forward a little thing so I don't keep you guys hanging around watching uh, dead space in this video. Okay, that clone is completed. Let's go take a look inside our Nimble storage system up here. But you see our, our records are stale, so let's refresh them. And now we've got a couple extra volumes that are created in this folder. And we can see this file here, and they're always about 4 gigs in size. Um, this would be your configuration information, the BIOS information, and stuff like that would be contained with this. Obviously, this is always thinly provisioned. Um, and this would be your VMDK. So let's go back inside our uh, vSphere environment and let's power on that virtual machine.
Right, so what happens when you power on a virtual machine in a VMFS environment? There's always a swap file that's created for the virtual machine. Right, so what happens inside a, um, a, a VVAL environment? So let's see. You open up a console, see if this guy is fully booted up. There it is. And then over here, we'll do a refresh. And now we can see there's a swap volume created. Right. So now we'll right click. And then we'll shut down the guest OS. We'll click yes. Now that that virtual machine's turned off, let's look inside our nimble storage. And yeah, we'll do a refresh. You can see that swap file has vanished. All right, so that's kind of the manual process for creating uh, VVALs within a nimble system. Uh, the far easier process is actually to create um, a, a volume of eval uh, section through um, the nimble plugin. So if I go up to Cluster, and we'll right click, and go down to Nimble Actions. Right, you see, I can create a, a VVAL data store. So let's do that. Right, at this context, we're going to select the storage system we want to use. We're going to use the AF40 that we've been using. We're going to click Next. Now we're going to give it a name, and we'll call this um, uh, Plugin. I plug in Nimble VVAL and we're presenting it to this cluster, so those ESX servers. We'll click Next. How much space do we want to use? We'll do two terabytes this time. Obviously, this will all be thin. And then we're not going to set any performance criteria. We're just going to click Create. You can see it's been successfully submitted. And down here, we can see the process rolling on through. Okay, we're done scanning. So if we look under volumes, we we'll see the plugin, Nimble VVAL. Right, and then what we'll do is we're going to migrate that virtual machine we're working with on over to that. So let's right click, select migrate, we'll change the storage only, click next. Now notice all my volumes that are not VVALs are listed as incompatible storage. But anything that is a VVAL, I can migrate this virtual machine. So you can migrate in, but you're not going to get out. I'm going to click Next and then Finish. And it shouldn't take too long because it's on the same storage system. All right, so that's migrated on over. Let's take a look at the backend storage. Hit the refresh. And here we have this new plugin VVAL. And then we can see the HA information as well as configuration information in the VMDK. All right, so let's power this machine up. See that she's powered on. We'll open up a console to this guy. Right. We look back in the storage again, and then we can do a refresh if we want to. We will see that the swap file exists again. All right, this machine's booted up. Let's log in. And let's create a file. And I'll put a little bit of information in our file. And I'm doing this so I could take a VMware snapshot of this virtual machine. 
All right, so let's go inside VMware. Let's right click. Let's go up to snapshots and we'll click take a snapshot. We'll just leave the name as it stands and we'll click OK. See the snapshots getting created down here. Okay, now that our snapshots have been created, let's go take a look at what we can see within the storage system. So again, our table records are stale. Let's refresh this. And again, now we can see another volume of sorts for the snapshot. So let's go inside the virtual machine and let's go get rid of our file. And we'll empty it out of the recycle bin. All right, oops, maybe I want to recover that file. So let's close out of this. Right click on the virtual machine. We'll power this guy off hard. We'll click yes. And then we'll right click on the virtual machine. We'll go up to snapshots. And then we'll revert to last snapshot. We'll click yes. Okay, let's open up a console. Click OK. And we can see we're back in our environment and our file is back up there. And again, these snapshots, because they're storage based, um, they don't have necessarily have an impact on performance within an environment. All right, the last piece I'll kind of show you is, is what does this VVAL look like um, on the back end? Because certainly we've been looking at what it looks like on the front end. So here we'll look at our plugin. And we can see we have something fairly typical. As far as uh, HA and, and our virtual machine file name, it looks a lot like a VMFS from this perspective. And over here under virtual machines, you can see our virtual machine. So I hope you found this video informative, and please stay tuned for more videos.